Let us pray. O oh Lord, you are been so good. You are so good to us. O oh Lord, you are excellent in our lives every day. O oh Lord, you are been so good. You've been so good to us. O oh Lord, you are excellent in our lives. Brethren, I want you to bless the name of the Lord, who has been so good to us. Bless the Lord this hour for your life's preservation. By his grace, this year is running to an end. Remember that not everybody who shouted Happy New Year is still alive today. It's not by our power. It's not by our wisdom. But because of God's mercy, that is why we have not been consumed. Remember all kind of incidences across the globe. Disasters. All kind of Natural disaster that claims several lives. What about the pandemic? In some nations, epidemics. Bless the name of the Lord for preserving you. Magnify him for his grace upon your life. Bless the Lord for your children. Bless the Lord for your entire family. This year you have traveled 
perhaps by air, by road, or a time of water, but the Lord has kept you alive. Bless the name of the Lord for keeping your body from being attacked from that sickness that can destroy your life. Bless him, bless him, bless him. Bless the Lord for the salvation of your soul. Bless the Lord for all that is between your life. Glorify the name of the Lord. Thank you, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. I want you to thank the name of the Lord for our leaders. Bless the Lord for our daddy and mommy here at Deboe. Bless the name of the Lord for the way the Lord has been preserving them all through all the places the minister this year, by the special grace of God, the Lord had kept them alive for us. Bless the name of the Lord for salvation of souls through the ministration of these our parents. Across the globe, millions of people have been blessed. Bless the name of the Lord for all the miracles and signs and wonders that the Lord is wrought through the ministry of our father and our mother, Daddy and Mommy Gio. Glorify the name of the Lord. Thank the Lord for the church. The way the Lord has preserving his church. Magnify his holy name. Thank you, Father God. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Daddy, we bless your name for all that you have to us. Indeed, you have been extremely good. Where do we start from? Counting your blessings, your grace, your supremacy of our lives. How you have been making yourself available in the affairs of our lives. We want to say thank you. We want to thank you for this platform where in the million people are listening to your words. Thank you because of all the episodes of this particular prayer ring. Thank you because of the souls that are won. Thank you because of the people that have been delivered. Thank you for your grace upon our lives, O God. And whenever we come together, we want to say thank you for answering our prayers. To you be your glory. Today we are here again. We know by your special grace that you are ready. You are ready to listen to us. You are ready to answer our prayers. You are ready to touch our lives. You are ready to heal us, and you are ready to save our souls. Daddy, like never before today, make yourself available, and let your name be glorified. At the end of it all, let it be said that truly the Lord has met with us. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. We are refer you are right now. Lift up your voice unto the Lord and shout a resounding hallelujah. We are today dealing with a subject in our prayers that I believe is needed for the hour. And that is the matter concerning our heart. And today, the message will be titled Heart Preservation. In Proverbs chapter 4, Verse 23, Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. There the Bible says, Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. In other words, God is saying, Preserve your heart. Keep your heart. Guard your heart. Protect your heart. Because if anything affects that heart in a negative form, it can affect your entire life. Today, we read the testimony of a man who pleaded to be anonymous as it were. And when we read the testimony, we discover how far the devil can knock somebody down. Let me read in part. 
I was introduced to this platform on November 8, just recently, 2021. And I can say this is the greatest thing to happen to me this year. Currently, it is like my life is spinning out of control. And I know deep within me that the solution is beyond my human capacity. Hence, the prayer ring platform has been my place of refuge. It kept on saying, from after midnight today, November 23, I was feeling very sad. I cried a lot, never felt the combination of our sadness and opened like that before in my life. I tried to pray. I just couldn't concentrate enough to utter sensible words. First, so alone. The devil just kept on reminding me about how I failed in everything. I failed in my business. And recently, my wife got fed up with me and left me too. The thought of killing myself flooded my mind all through. I was done. But then, by God's grace, in a gathering like this today, we normally gather every morning. The Lord led this man into his presence. And by the time I read down, it, had been, it discovered that God has a way of bringing out of all whatever it did, what he referred to as being locked down by the devil. Let me read the last paragraph. After the Almighty God had done so many things in his life. Say, however, the greatest testimony is that the fact that God is here. God hear my cries and didn't allow the devil to be victorious over me. We want to bless the name of the Lord for what he's doing. So the issue of our heart is issue of life. And the Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23 that we have read says, Keep your heart with all diligence. Out of it is the issues of life. Before we move, I want you to pray. Say, Almighty God, rescue my heart from all the bombardment of the enemy. Take my heart out of the cage of the enemy. Wherever my heart has been captured, deliver my heart today, O oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. You've just told me, Lord, that as you keep my heart with all diligence, I commit my heart to your hand now. Rescue my heart, O oh God, from all kind of demonic bombardments that have been affecting my soul, my life, and my heart in particular. In the mighty name of Jesus, rescue my heart, deliver my heart, set my heart free. In the mighty name of Jesus, my heart happened to be the issues of my life. Therefore, whatever is going to affect my life, oh God, that is trying to deal with my heart in order to carry out the assignment against my life. Rescue my heart today in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Now let's consider how our master Jesus presents this issue of our heart. In John chapter 14 verse 1. John 14, 1, Jesus says, Let not your heart be troubled. Take notice of that. Don't permit your heart to be captured. Don't permit your heart to be fitted with any form of sorrow. Let not your heart be troubled. Then he continued by saying, Ye believe in God, believe also in me. From the passage we have just read, let's consider the damage done by a troubled heart. 
Because Jesus has all the reasons why he has directed us, why he has counseled us, why he has warned us, why he has led us to, to that particular understanding that our heart should not be allowed to experience any trouble. Number one, Jesus is saying, brethren, don't lose your heart. Because according to 2 Samuel chapter 4, verse 1, 2 Samuel chapter 4, verse 1, there the Bible says, When Saul son heard that Abner had died in Abram, he lost his heart. In other words, he heard that, so, uh, that pathetic news, and he permitted that news to enter into his heart. That is how he lost his heart. So when the matter, Jesus warns us that we should not allow our heart to be troubled, Jesus could be quoted as saying, son, daughter, don't lose your heart. In Genesis 45, verse 25 to 27, Genesis 45, Verse 25 to 27, they brought news to Jacob and they told Jacob, Joseph is alive. The Bible says he fainted. In other words, he was about to give up the ghost. He was unconscious. Hunting, they began to tell them, this is it. And they said, Papa, look out. See that wagon. That is the wagon Joseph sent to come and carry you. And the Bible says, the spirit of Jacob, their father, revived. When he heard the news, because he could not believe, he thought he was lying. That sorrow entered, and he was about to give out the ghost. God is saying to somebody here today, do not lose your heart. And I want you to pray wherever you are. Say, Almighty God, whatever is the agent of bad news, agent of negative news, that will allow me to lose my heart, they will never be permitted to enter to my heart. Pray that prayer with all your heart. Every agent of bad news, wherever they are coming from, that will want me to lose my heart. They will never permit it to enter to my heart. My heart will reject certain bad news. In the mighty name of Jesus, pray that prayer. God performs signs and wonders and miracles whenever we pray that agent of bad news, evil news, terrible news, fearful news, deadly news, negative news, that will allow your heart to be, to, to be loose as it were. Almighty God, don't allow my heart to accept it in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Number two, when you get to Genesis chapter 42, verse 28. Genesis chapter 42 Verse 28, you are going to discover there that troubled heart creates room for fear. And Jesus could be quoted as saying, don't create room for fear. Anytime your heart is permitted to be troubled, it opens door for fear to enter. And according to John, 1 John chapter 4, verse 18, 1 John, 1 John chapter 4, verse 18, there the Bible says, fear art torment. In other words, don't uh, permit your heart to be tormented. When fear is permitted to enter, then you are going to discover something will begin to torment you. You won't be able to sleep again. You won't be able to get your bearing. Suddenly, you are going to discover your VP will rise and there could be heart attack. When fear is permitted to enter, suddenly your entire system will be disorganized. I want you to pray. Say, Almighty God, 
every agent of fear that is trying to penetrate into my life, particularly into my heart, I reject it now in the mighty name of Jesus. Pray that prayer with all your heart that every fear factor that is trying to pull down my heart, that is trying to knock down my system, that is trying to, to, to disorganize my life, I decree today they will not be permitted to enter into my life. And I cancel and I remove, I cast away all the fear factor out of my life in the mighty name of Jesus. They will not be allowed to demonstrate their power for my life. I reject it right now. I cancel it right now. I cut them out right now. My heart be free from all fear in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for having answered. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Number three. According to Numbers chapter 32, verse 7 to 9. Numbers chapter 32, verse 7 to 9. You are going to discover there. Anytime your heart is troubled, discouragement will come in. So Jesus could be quoted as saying, when he said, let not your heart be troubled, it could be quoted as saying, don't be discouraged. Because anytime you permit that particular trouble to penetrate into your heart, immediately that trouble settles there. Definitely, discouragement will set in. And you know, the meaning of discouragement, it will not allow you to finish that project. It will not allow you to move forward. What you see outside there, it's just that thing that will knock you down. You won't see any strength in your life any longer. Every step you want to take, that discouragement said, don't try that. And all others that you had overtaken before, they begin to leave you behind. Discouragement is a serious and terrible thing. I want you to pray right now. Is there any form of discouragement in your life before? Call upon the Lord right now. Discouragement, get out of my life. I will never permit any discouragement to tabernacle with me. Whatever I decided to discourage my life, whatever has decided to discourage my destiny, my, whatever I, did ever, uh, I decided to discourage the step I want to take or that I've taken, I reject that discouragement right now. I command my spirit, I command my heart in the name of Jesus. Encourage yourself in the Lord your God in the mighty name of Jesus. My heart, you can be cast down. My heart, you can be polluted. My heart, you can be discouraged in the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever is any form of discouragement, I cancel it now in the name of Jesus. Let courage enter to my heart. I'm moving on again. I'm moving on again. I'm moving on again. Thank you, Father God, because it is done already. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Number four, according to Deuteronomy chapter 19, verse 5 to 6. Deuteronomy chapter 19, verse 5 to 6. You are going to discover that a troubled heart can make you to commit suicide. When the heart is troubled, you then begin to think of taking away your whole life. Then Jesus Christ said, therefore, let not your heart be troubled. Jesus could be quoted as saying, don't kill yourself. Look at testimony. Where when we started, that man, young man, had been contemplating of committing suicide. Anytime this discouragement set in, you just decide to kill yourself. I had attempted suicide before. I didn't know the Lord that time, but he knew me. Three solid times. When I attempted suicide, he called me by my name. I'm trusting God for somebody here today. The Lord will call you by your name in the mighty name of Jesus. Listen to me attentively. When the Lord God had decided to rescue your life, to give you your expected end, he's saying today, son, he's saying today, daughter, don't kill yourself. I am standing by your side. In the mighty name of Jesus. 
Because when the heart is hot, somebody could contemplate of taking his life. I want you to pray right now. Almighty God, by your special grace, I will not die. I will live to declare the glory of the Lord. In the land of the living, in the mighty name of Jesus, whatever therefore staying and trying or contemplating to terminate my life, by the special grace of God, I'm coming out of that one today. I will live and declare the glory of the Lord in the mighty name of Jesus. I will not die. I will live to declare the glory of the Lord. Begin to pray right now that you fulfill that destiny in the mighty name of Jesus. That nothing will be able to truncate your destiny in the mighty name of Jesus. Let that prayer be rendered. Let God hear your voice in the mighty name of Jesus. I will arise. Oh yes, I will not be totally locked down in the mighty name of Jesus. Begin to prophesy into your life. Begin to prophesy into your life. I will read that goal. Ah, I will not die along the way. I will witness the good days and glorious days of my life in the name of Jesus Christ. I arise now from where I've been knocked down. I cannot be permanently locked down. That prophet said, rejoice not over me, my enemy. When I'm knocked down, I will rise again. By his grace, I will rise again in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Number five. When the master Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. The Lord knew a troubled heart can qualify, I mean, disqualify a man from being enlisted into the army of God's kingdom. When a heart is troubled, such a man will be disqualified from being enlisted in the army of the kingdom of God. So when that master Jesus told you, when he has told us, let not your heart be troubled. Jesus could be quoted as saying, son, daughter, don't let yourself down. In Deuteronomy chapter 20 verse 8, Deuteronomy chapter 20 verse 8, there the almighty God spoke to the officers. Whenever people have been elected and elected and have been appointed to go to war, he said, officers will speak to the people. And this is one of the things the officers will say. The officers shall speak further unto the people, and they shall say, What man is there among you that is fearful and faint-hearted? Let him go and return to his house. Can you see now? A time to go for war. Anyone who is panicked, anyone who is fearful, anyone who is faint-hearted, anyone who is not courageous, say, go back home. You are not worthy to go and fight at all. Any time that a discouragement set in such a fellow will be dis disqualified from standing for God anywhere. So Jesus declared saying, don't let yourself down. And that's the reason why troubled heart must never be permitted in your own life. I want you to pray right now that in the mighty name of Jesus, nothing will be permitted to disqualify me from serving the law. Nothing will be permitted to disqualify me from working for God. Nothing will be, will be permitted in my life to disqualify me from working with God. Pray that prayer with all your heart. I remain as the soldier in the army of the Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. When the time comes to go to battle, I will never be discouraged in the mighty name of Jesus. The army of the Lord, one of the soldiers in the army of the Lord, I remain forever in the mighty name of Jesus. And with them, nothing will separate me from being part of the army of the Lord in the mighty name of Jesus. I will fight for the cause of the gospel. I will fight the good fight of faith in the mighty name of Jesus. I will not be cut down by any form of discouragement in the mighty name of Jesus. Pray that prayer. 
Oh, the strength of the Lord will be my strength. I will never be discouraged. Circumstances will not discourage me. All kind of bombardment will not discourage me. I will never be fainted. My heart will not be fainted in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. I feel settled. What the master Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. Then, someone will be tempted to ask a question or be led to ask a question. Uh -uh. I should not be troubled. On what ground? Don't you see all the happiness around me? All the bombardment around me? All the troubles I'm facing with? In my home? In my career? In my nation? Can't you see all kind of sorrow around? Do you see any good news at all across the globe? On what ground? That is why Jesus quickly answered. Why well, after he said, let not your heart be troubled, he quickly heard it. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. That is going to be the second segment of our prayers. In other words, Jesus could be quoted as saying, take your stand on the revelation that you have of us. Look at us. Look at my father. Look at me, the son of God. And then, the revelation you have of us, what I have told you, all the things have opened to you, the words have released into your life, the revelations have shown to you, Act on it. And that's the reason why you should not allow your heart to be troubled. In Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 39. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 39. Listen to what the Bible says there. Know therefore this day and consider it in your heart that the Lord is God in heaven above and upon the earth beneath and there is none else. In other words, this God who is your God reigns above, reigns on earth, and underneath the earth he reigns, and there's no one else. Then, who is that thing? I mean, who is that fellow? And what is that thing that will make you afraid? So remember this God, therefore. And God could be quoted as saying, remember me of the battles I have fought before now. Remember all what you need to do is to just remember me of the battles that I have fought before now. And number one, God could be quoted as saying, I have fought battles against those with bow, be bows and arrows before now, and have won the battle. In another words, I have fought human enemies. Check the words. Check my record. Go to the scoreboard, and you are going to discover what I have done, the battles I have fought in the past. In 2 King chapter 19, verse 35, 2 King chapter 19, verse 35, there the Bible says, and it came to pass that night that the angel of the Lord went out and smote in the camp of Assyria and hundred first score and five thousand. In other words, one hundred and eighty-five thousand. In the night, all these multitudes, came together to fight just few and handful a uh, number of people and they cried to God. One angel, God said, you are going to take life out of their lives. And when the children of God woke in the morning, all what they could see were dead bodies. In fact, the assignment they did that very time, the only word they did for every time that they began to carry this power. God said, remember, I have fought the bat battles before. So what are the battles you are facing right now? The Lord God said, remember, I have fought battles before. Now, stand wherever you are. Commit your own battle to the Lord. Your own, your own problem to the Lord right now. Let God hear your voice. This is what I'm passing through, Lord. You have fought and won before. On my behalf today, oh God, fight, 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 
fight, fight. Give me victory over all these enemies. In the mighty name of Jesus, fight for me. Fight for me. Pray that prayer. The Lord God is assuring you today because I have fought in the past and have won all the wars. I can fight again. Remember how I have fought several wars before. I've never lost any, any war. I'm at the Katante Rekasandia. Commit yourself to my hand. God could be quoted as saying, What is that mountain? That's why I say, Let not your heart be troubled. I am still alive. I am still there. I have not changed. The God is saying to you today, Fight my battle for me. He's expecting you to say, Thank you, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. And as you have prayed, I'm trusting the Almighty God for your life. He will fight your battles for you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Number two, when the Lord told us, believe ye in God, believe also me. God is saying to you today, I have fought poverty in this unified before now and replace it with prosperity. So if what you are battling with, look at the man, the testimony we read, when we started, everything went down. And the wife could not take care of his family again. The wife ran away. Oh my God. If I have read the, the, total, the entire passage, you will have seen how the man said everything concerning his life was totally upside down. He could not pay his house rent. He could not set his bill. He could not eat at times. Oh God. But God is saying, are you there right now fighting poverty? Or poverty is fighting against your life. And your life is going down, 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 financially speaking. God said, I have fought poverty in this unified before and replace it with prosperity. In 2 Kings chapter 7, verse 1, 2 Kings 7, verse 1, remember, all the entire city of Samaria were totally besieged. They were in a siege. Things were so difficult that people began to hit their children. But suddenly, the Almighty God, within 24 hours, turned their life around for the better. Second King chapter 4, you should remember that, of a particular widow. Uh -uh, the creditor came to take away the children. She cried to God, and the Lord turned her life around within 24 hours. And the same woman who was so in debt, that they wanted to take away the children in replacement of what they owed, became the oil dealer in the twinkle of an eye. This God is still alive. He can transform your life. He can change your destiny. He can eradicate poverty. He can bring your life into that particular I mean, point of dream that you have been dreaming of in the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to, therefore, stand on your feet wherever you are and begin to talk of I mean, pray upon the this God and say, Almighty God, visit me today. Visit me today. Turn around my life for the better. Let your name be glorified in my life. Any form of poverty that has been bombarding my life, bombarding my career, bombarding my business, bombarding my family, bombarding my wife, bombarding my husband, bombarding my children. Oh God, turn our life around for the better. Change our stories today in the mighty name of Jesus. You have told me, I shall not allow my heart to be troubled. Therefore, I cast myself in your hand right now. Turn all my stories, oh God, around for the better in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. And I join my faith with your faith. That the Lord lives. And the spirit leave. Starting from today, poverty will leave you alone. In the name of Jesus. Your certificate will begin to work for you. In the mighty name of Jesus. We are refer. You have decided to work without any further delay. You will be gainfully employed in the name of Jesus. Whatever has been draining your resources, Almighty God will deal with short today in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God could be quoted as saying, where say, trust me. God could be quoted as saying, number three, I have fought stagnation 
and put progress in motion. Before now, I have fought any kind of stagnation and I put progress in motion. John chapter 5, verse 8 to 9. John 5, 8 to 9. You remember the man who was an expert for 38 years. The master Jesus got there. Simply told the man, arise. In other words, that day, Jesus could be quoted as saying, Ma, your stagnation ended today. And that is what God is speaking to somebody here today. You are down there. Nobody to help. You can't move to anywhere. No more progress. You just look at yourself, rotting away. The master is telling you now, I have forced stagnation before, and I put progress in motion. And the same Jesus is here today. He's speaking to your life, arise. He's speaking to your life, arise. And that man, the Bible says, and immediately the man was made old. He arose. He began to walk. He began to move forward. He began to make progress. The same Jesus is speaking to your life today, arise. Any form of stagnation, whatever that area of your life, where your life has been stagnated, the Almighty God is speaking to your life today. Get out. Stand off. Begin to make progress. You go and join your hand together with our Master Jesus. Join your faith together with the Master Jesus and call upon the name of the Lord now. From today onward, any form of stagnation in my life is over. In the mighty name of Jesus, I will never be on this spot any longer. I begin to move forward from today. Whatever is the chain that the enemies have used to tie me down, the snare is broken today. In the mighty name of Jesus, no more stagnation in my life. 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 Thank you, Father God. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Number four, when the master told us, believe in God, believe also in me. When you consider Luke chapter 5, verse 4 to 7, Luke 5, 4 to 7, Almighty God could be quoted as saying, I have fought failure and commanded success to take charge. Before now, I have fought failure and I commanded success to take charge. You remember that story? Or that Luke chapter 5. A man called Peter, tossed all the night, caught nothing. He failed woefully. He wasn't lazy. He didn't go there at the wrong time. He, uh, he went there at the right time. He made use of the right tool. He was a professional in that uh, area of fishing. Yet, tossed all the night with hard work. In fact, the Bible, he called what he had done as toiling all the night. Yet, he felt woefully, but when Jesus came on board, the following morning, the man who had failed throughout the night suddenly began to make it. The testimony we read now, that man said, I failed in everything, in everything. But the, when the Lord took over, success began in all things. The same Jesus He's saying today, in the life of so many people, I have fought failure and I have given them success to take charge in their life. And your home will start today. I want you, therefore, to begin to pray. Mention the area of your life where you had failed. The Lord is by your side right now. Begin to talk to Jesus where you had failed before now. Mention a particular aspect of your life when you had experienced failure before now and say, Lord, let any form of failure in my life come to an end today in the mighty name of Jesus. Look, your success that come from you begin to appear in the mighty name of Jesus. Decorate my life with your own success. In the mighty name of Jesus, I try all what I can, all things I can, everything possible. But Lord, I've not been able to make it. I see, continue to fail. Almighty God, I commend my life to your able hand. Eradicate, cancel, uproot all the seed of failure out of my life. 
in the mighty name of Jesus and begin to profess that to your life now. I will fail no more. I will fail no more. I will never fail again in the mighty name of Jesus. Let God hear your voice right now. I will fail no more. I will fail no more. Thank you, Father God. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Let me round up. Number five. According to Luke chapter 4, verse 40. Luke chapter 4, verse 40. Jesus there could be quoted when he said, believe, yet believe in God, believe also in me. He said, I have four sickness and diseases before now, and I have replayed them with sand F. In that Luke 4, verse 40, it was in a night. When it was towards evening, they brought all kind of people that were sick, all kind of sickness, all kind, all kind. We read in a testimony, I think, three days ago, in one of the programs that somebody sent. He could not walk for how many, how many years now? But he just lifted up his, his prayer point. And that is how he began to walk. A kind of sickness. So whatever you are passing through, I have no time. I've, I've opened the testimony here and I read to your hearing again and again and again what the almighty God is doing. My fellow things. My fellow things. In the testimony this morning, somebody had a growth right there. And he had a testimony yesterday or three days ago or somebody who had a growth and they have been there for 20 years. How the fellow called upon the name of the Lord. And the 20 year growth just disappeared like that. And this man said, Lord, you heard. And when we now ask them to key into the testimony of this man, of this fellow, that God can also do your own. The man, the woman rather, who testified today said she wanted to touch her own growth. And suddenly, she couldn't sit there. Then she began to shout, Raw miracle, raw miracle, raw miracle. The same God is still alive to do your own. He had dealt with all kind of sickness before now. And he knows that it's your turn. Call upon him now. What is that sickness that is ravaging your life? What is that sickness that is in your system? What is that sickness that is in your blood? What is that sickness that is your brain? What is that sickness that is your moral? What is that sickness that is your flesh? What is that sickness that is in your system? In your heart? In your kidney? In whatever organ? Call upon the name of the Lord. You have fought sickness before. He said it is finished. The, the Bible says, by his stripes we are healed. He's ready today again to heal you to deliver you, to set you free. Your own, yours is the next in that particular glory and testimony of the Almighty God. Call upon him right now. Thank you, Father God. Glory and honor and power and dominion to your holy name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. And listen to this. How long will this God going to spend with you? Is he going to abandon you along the way? When you trust him today, what about your tomorrow? Listen to what God said. That is why Jesus Christ said, let not your heart be troubled. Yea, believe in God. Isaiah 46 verse 4. Listen to what God says. In Isaiah 46, verse 4. And even to your old age, I am he. And even to your worry here, will I carry you? I have made and I will bear. Even I will carry and I will deliver you. God is saying, I'm not just going to be with you when you are young or during your youth. No. Even when you are old and you are, your entire system is weak, you cannot do what you are doing now any longer. I say, that time I am God, I will carry you. That means it can be trusted. It's reliable. It's there for you forever. That's what God is saying today. 
That is the reason why before I pray the final prayer, are you right there on this platform? And you are yet to surrender your life to Jesus. What are you waiting for? All kind of things in this world to cause trouble into your heart. We have listed it when we started. The condition of your heart and the damage that heart will do in your life. But when the Lord is, I mean, whenever the Lord is permitted to take over, then you are in charge. Wherever you are, therefore, bow your head and commit your life to God's end. That's your heart. Say, Lord, I commit my heart to your hand. Save me. Save my soul. Let your blood cleanse my sins away. Deliver me today. Set me free today. Write my name in the book of life. And let your grace, O oh God, be released upon my life. And I promise you, I will follow you to the end. Because you have decided to carry me. I yield my life into your hand. Therefore, carry me, O oh God. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Do you know, if you have done that one with all your heart, no doubt about it, salvation has entered into your life. So we are delighted to, we're delighted to hear from you. All the contact address will be displayed on the screen immediately. We we'll need to hear from you. And the name of the Lord be glorified in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. We are referring you are there for all of us. Lift up your hands and let us pray. Daddy God, you have promised all of us today that you will carry us. And our master Jesus has told us, we should not allow our heart to be troubled because God is there for us. We commit ourselves to your hand, therefore, carry us from today. Guide us from today. Lead us from today. Deliver us from all trouble. We pray that no environmental pollution will pollute our lives because you are going to carry us through. We trust you. We rely on you. We believe in you. We cast our body into your hand to the glory of your name. Thank you, Father God. And the great to serve you to the end, release upon our lives. Thank you, Daddy, for having answered. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen and amen. We are refer you are, therefore. I want you to lift up your hands and shout a resounding hallelujah.